Let's talk about race. You know, you can't see the money can't be eaten. Assassins, right? It's where you be. Once again. But I got some help for you. Check this out. Here's the escalator. World dominator. Miseducator. Boom, toon, walk to the devil's lair. This virus of racist faces contagious to all types of places. Gotta peel layers off, and it ain't gonna get done soft. Discussion can stave off the bussin', fussin', bum rushin'. Politicians filibusterin', ways to usher in eugenetic disruption. Won't terrorize those with open eyes, not dealing with fakes who just wanna sit around and theorize. Meanwhile, in the street, another pair of police state hate related victims. The mind's eyes lay lifeless Looking at concrete Many topics, many ways to drop it How did we get here? So as we move into post-Civil War eras, the Black Codes and Jim Crow laws. So as we had mentioned previously during the Civil War slides, a serious issue facing the newly freed African-American population were matters of overexposure, poor access to even basic resources such as food and water, and of course aspects of uh, insufficient health care and education. Also, after the physical destruction caused by the uh, physical conflict of the Civil War, there was a great number of both white and black refugees that had places that were either former dwellings or places that could be made to be dwellings, such as uh, open real estate in cities such as Atlanta, that were functionally burned to the ground during the total war campaign. And so there was a great number of refugees, you know, regardless of race, that were in need of supervision and government assistance. And so for a number of years, there was a government agency that was directly for that called the Freedmen's Bureau that was able to provide many of these important resources to the newly freed black community, as well as Southern whites that were also in need of such resources. However, the Freedmen Bureau would not last for as long as it could. Very quickly after its foundation, it was immediately attacked by Southern politicians. Frequently, it would be assaulted in Congress and discussed as a policy that would lead to lazy uh, laziness among the black populations, which is obviously a social stigma in regards to black people receiving uh, aid from the government that long since persists after that all the way into the modern day. And as soon as there were enough votes that were backing this from Southern politicians, it was immediately stripped of its funding and eventually axed altogether as a government agency. Soon after this ended in uh, reconstruction, we could see the foundations of an entirely new era of how black Americans would be treated now that they were no longer slaves in legality. And this was through strict monitoring and strict manners of being policed and adjusted to their newfound uh, legal freedom. And these were through manners of law called black codes, which in many senses were just slavery and another name. So this was through manners of incredibly strict discrimination on the state level, since adders of uh, the federal level were a bit too difficult to touch now. 
but through strict control over state legislature, very strict laws that were able to almost directly target black people were passed. In many cases, these were laws that would directly target black people. And they were able to do things such as heavily constrict how easy it was for black people to vote, regardless of it being a amendment guaranteed right. There are lots of workarounds and legal loopholes that you could do in order to make it impossible for black Americans to vote. Also, you could strip black Americans of the right to serve in juries, as was their right as citizens, as well as many other rights that were generally guaranteed to American citizenry were able to be stripped from African Americans. There are lots of particular aspects that are really strict or particularly distinct. You have lots of examples of these things being uh, particularly pervasive in the deep south, such as in states of Mississippi, where you have uh, specific codes in regards to how uh, legal employee uh, legal employment of individual types of uh, black people were able to be handled, even resulting in uh, inability for certain uh, black people to be able to even leave certain causes of employment, very much feeding into the well-earned title of slavery by another name. In addition to these aspects of uh, entrapment and placing uh, Black people in positions where they're unable to freely uh, travel about uh, sufficiently or easily as a free citizen should be. You also have significant aspects of criminalization of uh, petty crimes or extremely small scale crimes, which allows for law enforcement to be extremely heavy handed and strict in regards to how Black people are treated something that very much continues into the modern narrative about uh, criminalization of mundane acts by African-American people and black people. So the Reconstruction Act of 1867 were a series of acts and laws that were passed in order to soften the harshness of the black codes exactly. So when generally when people talk about the eras of post-slavery after the Civil War and how that bled into racist laws, there is a significant blending in the minds of most people in regards to the black codes and the Jim Crow laws as a you know nebulous uh, singular stretch of time when there is actually a particular uh, legal and historical difference in terms of both their function and their implementation. So with the Reconstruction Act of 1867 is when you get into this particular shift where you move away from the previous black codes and into the Jim Crow laws, where the Jim Crow laws had a specific focus on separating black and white people after the court case of Plessy versus Ferguson specifically in regards to the strengthening of the foundations of the term separate but equal, rather than the black codes previously, which were specifically and much more blatantly uh, targeting the even most basic rights and freedoms of technically freed black people. So the Jim Crow laws, such as I had recently described, were very much about the segregation of black and white people, allowing them to not be in close proximity or occupy the same public spaces. This included as simple a thing as uh, being able to associate in certain spaces outside using things such as the same bathrooms and water fountains. And this is something that a lot of people have a clear image in their mind of when they think of uh, American uh, uh, segregation and the uh, civil rights era is this form of law and this form of oppression. Incredibly pervasive 
and uh, entrench system of laws that were across every level of being a private citizen and stretching well into aspects of government service, such as the military. During this era is when you also get a specific boom in a lot of the uh, particular physical caricatures that continue to be used to demonize black people is where you have uh, a lot of the births of specific stereotypes which can, uh, still continue to this day, such as blackface is a very commonly known one. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race.